Hey folks, in this episode, I'm going to show you something cool that we can do with a factor as a variable when it's fed into count or group by. A few episodes ago, I made this figure showing the monthly amount of precipitation uh, by month, of course, across all 130 years worth of data that I have from a local NOAA weather station. And one of the things that I found as I was building out this figure was that if I had a month where there was no snow data, right, where there's just no data because perhaps it didn't snow, um, then the lines would get truncated for some of the years. Uh, initially, these were recorded as NAs, and then we dropped all the NAs. Um, and I'm going to assume that those NA values really should have been a zero, right? So if I see an NA in July, I think that's a zero. Anyway, what happened then was that we had year and month combinations where there was no data. Well, that caused that problem then where we had these lines for our different years that maybe started in October and didn't come back to, you know, July or August or September, right? And then I think we had some others um, at the other end of the snow year. And so the question then was, well, how do we get the rest of the line? How do we basically add in zero values? I used a bit of a kludge was to make a dummy data frame where I basically created a data frame that had all years, all months, um, and they were values of zero. Then if the data was missing in the real data frame, I brought in the zero from the dummy data frame to basically impute zero values. That just seemed a little bit kludgy, right? So what I wanna do in today's episode is another approach where I can turn the year and the month into a factor and I can then have R preserve those factors um, in the output. And so it may not find them, right? So it might report a zero, but what that also means is that I don't have to worry about doing these weird joins with dummy variables. So that's what we're gonna do in today's episode. If you wanna work with the code that I'm working with today, go down below into the description. There's a link to a blog post that'll get you all the instructions and information you need to get caught up with me. I'm going to be working out of snowseasons.r. That is in the code directory. Also, this script sources a code localweather.r. You can put in your own longitude and latitude to get weather data from where you live so that it's much more relevant to you. I'm gonna go ahead and run this script so that we can see the output file. So that script gives us this figure. Uh, and so this is what things should look like. So let me walk you through the code to explain how we built that figure. So again, as I said, with source code local weather.r, we create this variable local weather that has the date, the Tmax, the PRCP, and the snow. I then did a select on date and snow to get those two columns. I then did a drop NA, which removed all of the rows where we had NA values. Now, what I could have done here instead of drop NA is I could use a mutate on snow with if else. So if snow was NA, I could turn that into a zero, right? That would have worked and that would have solved a lot of problems as well, but we don't always have data in that configuration. So again, we dropped the NAs. We then calculated the calendar year using the year function, the month from the month function, both of those year and month functions coming from the Lubridate package. I then made the snow year so that if the date was before July 1st, uh, then it was the uh, the previous snow year, right? So here I am in August of 2022. That will be the beginning of the 2022 snow year. But if I was back in May of 2022, that would be the 2021 snow year, right? And so that's what this logic is doing here. And so then we see that snow data, it has the month, the snow year, and the snow. We of course also see that there are perhaps multiple rows for the same month and year, right? So November 1892 has four observations because there were four snow events uh, that were recorded uh, in November of 1892. I then went about building a plot to summarize the total snow by year. Uh, that gave us this nice line plot, right? Um, so we can kind of see that it seems somewhat flat up to about 1965 and then it goes up. I then looked at the number of snow events over the course of the year, uh, filtering out those rows where snow was zero, right? And then counted those snow years. And, and then plotted the count. And so that's what we see here is the total number of days with snow data over the past 130 years. All right, so now we get to the good stuff. So I created this dummy DF data frame that had all combinations of years and months. And then I added a zero column, a dummy column, right? And so if I look at dummy DF, again, we have all years and months as well as that dummy column. I then used a join to bring the snow data and the dummy DF together. 
uh, that then creates this four column data frame with the month, the snow year, the amount of snow and a column called dummy, right? And so because I did a right join uh, rather than an inner join, it will preserve all of the rows, the month and snow years from the data frame on the right, which was dummy DF, right? So if there's a snow year in a month in dummy DF that's not found in snow data, then the snow value there will be an NA value, right? And so what we do in this line 44 then is if we see an NA in snow, then we basically change that to zero. If we don't see an NA, then we keep the value that had already been there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and comment out these two lines and we can see what this would look like. We can see now that this line, um, I forget which year this is, um, starts in November, but doesn't have any preceding data. Uh, and there's also an example over here that ends in May, but doesn't have any following data for, for say June and July, okay? I wanna get back to having the complete data going out, but without doing this right join with dummy DF, I'll also go ahead and turn this off, right? And so what it turns out is that it, the solution is rather simple if we're using factors. So let me create another R script here so I can kind of do some demonstration of what I mean. So let's create a variable that I'll call x, and I'm gonna use a function called sample. Uh, sample allows you to generate a random sample of values. So I'm gonna do one to four, uh, and I'm gonna get, say, 100 values. And then I'm gonna do replace equals true. And so this will give me 100 values of one through four, right? So if I look at x, I see a bunch of one, twos, threes, and fours, right? So I can actually turn this into a tibble. Uh, so I'll do x equals all that and close out my parentheses. And so now I have this column, right? So the nice thing that I could do is I can go ahead and pipe this into count on x. And so now I see I have these different frequencies of the values one, two, three, and four. Well, let's say that I actually had five things that I was trying to count here, right? One through five. How would we deal with that? I don't see five in my output here. So what I could do would be to do a mutate on x to make it a factor. So we can do factor x, so we turn x into a factor, and we'll do levels one through five, right? And so if we look at this, it doesn't really change the output any, except that now, instead of this being a double, it's now a factor. And if I then pipe this into count, I still don't see any difference, right? I still see one through four. But what I can do here in count is I can go ahead and do dot drop equals false. That now gives me the fifth value of x, right? And we see that that is zero, right? And so count can only count what is there, right? And so if I got a vector of one, two, threes, and fours, it doesn't know that there should also be a five or six or whatever, right? Or it perhaps doesn't know that there should be a, you know, November 11th of 1938, right? Um, and so by making x a factor, by telling it what observations should actually be there, and then using dot drop with the count function, we preserve that. So this dot drop argument will also work nicely with a group by function. So let me go ahead and grab these two lines to illustrate. So count is really the same as group by and summarize where you're using the end function, right? So we can do group by x, right? And so now we see that we're grouped by x and there's four different values there. And then we do summarize, and we can do n equals the n function, right? And so that n function counts the number of things in each of our groups. And we now see we have one, two, three, and four. Of course, we know that x is a factor with five levels. So how do we get that fifth row? Well, just like we saw up here, we can do in group by, we could do dot drop equals false. And that'll say, don't drop those categories where we are missing data keep that in there. And so now we see that we get that five with the zero. Okay, very cool. So this is grouping or counting based on one variable x. That would be like us doing it by year, right? So do we have years with missing data, but we want to do months and years, right? Because we have um, probably some months, like say, uh, for that example, I showed you like September of that year, we didn't have any data. And so we need to make sure that 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 September of whatever year is represented by a zero in the data frame. To illustrate that, I'm gonna go ahead and create um, another tibble. And so again, we're gonna kind of use these silly values 
and we'll do y equals uh, sample. And let's uh, sample from uh, letters one through four. And we will then do, uh, let's get 100 of those. And we'll do replace equals true. All right, so let's see what that looks like, right? We, so we've got one column X with one, two, three, four, one column Y with A, B, C, D. This letters uh, vector is very handy. It's all of the letters in the alphabet in uppercase. Very cool. So again, like we saw up here, we can grab this mutate statement to make X a factor. And we're gonna pretend that we've got five levels, right? So let's also then make Y a factor, where we can say Y is a factor with levels. And I'm gonna go ahead and do A, B, C, D. And let's go ahead and throw in Z for, for fun. And so again, we now see that both X and Y are factors, but I wanna count those, right? So again, we could do count X and Y, and this then gives me all of the combinations of one, two, three, and four, um, and A, B, C, and D, but we don't have those missing values represented. Again, what we can add would be dot drop equals false. So now what we see is that we've got 25 different combinations, again, five and five, and we see that we've got zeros where we had Z, um, and we would also have zeros for that 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, 5Z, right? Cool. And again, we can do the same type of thing with group by and summarize. So again, we come down and we can then do group by x, y dot drop equals false. And we can do summarize uh, n equals the n function and we get the same output, okay? So let's go back to our snow seasons data where again, we have snow data, right? And we wanna make snow year and snow into their own factors, right? So we can go ahead, like we saw with that sample data, and do a mutate um, on snow year, and we'll then say that that is a factor of snow year, and we'll do levels equals 1892 to 2021, right? And then for month, I actually already had a uh, factor statement down here where I um, went ahead and I recalibrated the calendar year to be a snow year, right? So going from August through December and January through July. And let me make sure I've got all my right parentheses there. We now see that month and snow year are factors. This reminds me actually that I redid the year to start at August through December, whereas way back up here, I had uh, July 1st here where I was defining the snow year. So let me go ahead and change that. It doesn't change the output any, um, but it just makes everything a little bit more consistent. So one other thing that I need to add, of course, to my group by is the dot drop equals false so that we preserve those uh, groups that are missing, those month and year combinations that are missing. We'll go ahead and run this and we should see uh, the tails to those lines. We now have the complete data where this line was getting truncated prior to November and we had this line, I think, for May getting truncated as well and that goes out as well. So that's great, right? One other thing I wanna check is whether or not we had any years that were missing data. I don't think we did, because if we had years with missing data, we would have a flat line across the baseline here. But let's go back up to our code here where we were doing uh, these different counts, right? And so again, we had a group by snow year. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and move this mutate statement all the way back up to where I'm defining my snow data, because that's a pretty fundamental thing that I wanna make sure is included, because this needs to be included in snow data for all of the subsequent analyses, right? And so now I can do snow data group by snow year. I can do dot drop equals false. This gives us an error message that each group consists of only one observation. Do you need to adjust the group aesthetic? Looking at the plot, I'm reminded that because we made each year its own category, we made it a factor, right? we're basically plotting discrete data across the x-axis rather than continuous data. Something I'd be tempted to do would be something like mutate snow year uh, to be a double, right? So we could do like as.numeric on snow year and pipe that in. And so that works, but we now see that our snow year isn't the actual year. It's actually the index value or the row number, the year number basically of the data, right? And so 
factors are a funky beast <laughs> where it's basically a, um, a numerical vector that has names attached to it. And those names are called levels, right? So what we could do instead would be to do levels on snow year uh, and make those um, a, quantif a numerical value. And so now what we get is our snow year across the x-axis. And if I had only run to that point in the pipeline, we see that we get those years. If I had removed that as numeric and ran to that point in the pipeline, I would find that snow year is a character, right? So I do need to convert it to a numerical value to get the continuous x-axis and so that I can then connect all those points. Looking at the plot, what we find, of course, is that we don't have any years where we had zero millimeters of precipitation. If we look at this next pipeline that I made for counting the number of snow events, um, again, we have that same problem where snow year is um, a factor. And so again, here in count, we need to do dot drop equals false to retain um, all of the snow years. And then we need to do mutate um, on snow year to be as dot numeric levels on snow year, right? And then again, if we look at those first lines of the pipeline, we see that snow year now is a double rather than a factor. If I add a pipe to the end of that, we then get our line plot. And again, that year in the early 1960s uh, had a very small number of snow events, as you'd expect, because there wasn't a whole lot of snow that year. Finally, I can go ahead and delete this dummy DF code that just kind of gave me a bad feeling. So as we've gone through this, we've now seen a couple different ways that we can deal with those zero values. So we make sure that, you know, July of a given year has zero because there was no snow in July. So again, what's important to remember is that with group by and count, we can use the argument dot drop equals false on a column that is a factor type, right? And so we have a factor like our years or our months, we can define all of the values that should be in that factor. And then we can say dot drop equals false in group by or count. And then our summarize or our output will include um, those categories, those variable values in the output, even if the value is zero because it wasn't in the observed data. Not a big change to the plot of the data, but I feel better about the underlying code. And I would encourage you to play around with using uh, dot drop equals false in your own code. Uh, dot drop equals true, of course, is the default. So let me know if you have an application for this cool argument of count and group by. I would love to see where you can use that in your own data. Uh, let me know down below in the comments. Well, practice with this. Share what we're doing here with your friends so that they can become better R programmers themselves. I know I'm getting a lot better at this myself. So keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.